Well, hello everybody. I'm happy to say I finally got this setup built. This is my last and latest setup. For this video, I wanna go through all of my setups. I've got three different setups and I'm gonna go through each one individually. This is my most portable setup. It has the largest field of view. Over here, I have my very large Celestron Edge HD 800. And this is my very narrow field of view. It's for taking very small objects. And over here, I'm in my astronomy shed now. I have my mid-range scope. This is the Astrotech 115 refractor. And this one happens to be my original and oldest setup as well. I'm Kurt Zapatello and you're watching AstroQuest 1. Okay, back to my first setup here, my most portable setup. It consists of a Canon 200mm lens. There is a, an adapter from ZWO, it's a EOS adapter and filter drawer as well. And this is my ASI 2600 MC Pro. I've got a ring, a ZWO ring, with a mini dovetail that holds the mini guide scope, ZWO mini guide scope and a 120 guide camera. I've got a ADM ring attached to an ADM dovetail bar and, an AD, uh, and it's also connected to the Ioptron Skyguider Pro. I have a William Optics base for this thing. I replaced the original Ioptron base because this is much better. And down below, I've got an Ioptron tripod and I've, the brains, what operates this whole system is the ASI Air Plus. This is my second ASI Air. I used to have, I, or I already have an AS Air Pro uh, on my other scope, but th I liked it so much, I purchased another one to run this system. And I also have a Pegasus Pocket Power Box. Okay, let me go into some of this other stuff. First off, the camera lens. Now, this is a really good camera lens to use for astrophotography. It's a fixed 200 millimeter lens. That means it's not, it's not a telephoto. It, it's not a zoomable thing. It's 200 millimeters and that's it. Now this particular camera lens is amazingly good for astrophotography. It's not cheap. It's about $700, $750 new. Would I recommend going out and buying this particular lens to do this portable setup? If you're new to astrophotography, you may already have a camera and you may already have this particular lens or a lens similar. So if you are new to astrophotography, don't, I would not run out and buy anything new yet. I would just do what I did and just build a system around that. If you don't happen to have this lens, and but you want a nice portable system that gives a wide field of view like this lens would do, there, there are other options. You can get, the Ascar has a 135 millimeter telescope for a very reasonable price. I think it's $299. That's great. TPO has a 180 millimeter focal length telescope quasi camera lens for $389. That's a lot cheaper than this. Now those two things are only good for astrophotography. You're not going to do much more than that. This thing, of course, as I said, if you've already got a camera and you've already got this lens, you know, there's no need to go out and buy something new. You can also get, they have a Red Cat uh, 51, which is 250 milliliters, millimeters. That's actually a very, very good scope. I might purchase one of those at some point in the future. Uh, that's about $789 or something like that, or $800. Then there's the Radian Raptor, which is a 275 millimeter lens, and that's camera, or a telescope, and that's like $900, or $1,000 actually, $999. And Sharpstar has 
pretty much the same thing as that Radiant Raptor for only six eighty nine. So I'd probably go with that if I was gonna get if I was gonna get something else. Let's take a look at the, this Ioptron Skyguider Pro. Would I do this right now? And there's two, there's another company, Skywatcher, and they make the Skywatcher Adventure. And for a number of years, Skywatcher um, Adventure and this. Ioptron Skyguider Pro were analogous with each other. They were about the same. Some people prefer this, some people prefer that. You do need to get a new base if you get one of these things because if you're, the base that they give you, it's kind of hokey. And uh, if you, it's okay if you're just doing large field of view stuff with a smaller focal length tel uh, camera. But if you want to do polar alignment with one of those things, it, 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 you can't really get that accurate. This thing, you, you can get re really good polar alignment with. So I highly recommend this thing. But it's $220. So now your price is jacked up. This thing's about $400, $399 or something like that. And the original Sky Watcher was about the same price. So you'd have to buy, spend another couple hundred bucks on this base. Would I, right now, would I get... This, I'm not so sure because Skywatcher just came out with a brand new Skywatcher adventure that has go-to function. And that's about $700, so it's another $300. That go-to may be worth it. Um, and the reason I say that is because this, you have to manually find your target. It's a larger field of view with one, with, that you're gonna put up here, so it's not terribly difficult. But having a go-to is kind of good. <laughs> it's not a necessity, but it's um, if you're doing really, really wide field Milky Way shots, you do not need the go-to. But if you're going to try something that's much harder target, the go-to would be helpful. Then you can do plate solving and get to it. All right, what about the ASI Air Pro, Pro Plus? I love these things. It does everything. It polar lines. It could even... Even without the um, the go-to function, you could still do a polar alignment with this thing. And the new one, the Plus, oops, has additional aerial so you can get better Wi-Fi signal. Now, do I need the power box? And this came to my rescue. You don't need it. I'm, I'm not using it with my other setup. But for this particular setup, I need it. And the reason I need this power box is so I can run my camera, my new 2600 MC Pro. Now, ZWO's manual said all you would need is three amps of power to run this thing. And that's what comes out of the, uh, the ASI Error Plus on the ports. However, I tried connecting it up and it started up and then it just shut down right away. And I was out there my first time using it with this setup and, I, and it wasn't working. So I see this Christmas, what the hell is going on? Finally, I had, uh, this is my, uh, a second power box. I have another one in my shed running that telescope. And I said, let me just take a chance and run it through the power box. And sure as heck, plugged it right in the power box, thing runs perfectly. So I'm like, I oh, think this, this, so this thing came in Tank came to my rescue once again. So I got it working and worked fine for that night. And then I went back and checked on the website, uh, GWO's website or forum, and just said, has anybody else had any power issues? And it turns out they know about this. The ASA Air 2600 and the, uh, the ASI 533, and I think there was another one, they had problems running that directly through the, the ASI Air Pro and Plus, and they, they recommend connect, connecting the camera up separately. So anyways, I found that out the hard way. Okay, so I have this thing uh, connected up. It's very portable. I put some little Velcro on it, straps on it, and I have this thing. Just... And everything seems to be, seems to work really well with this thing, so I'm I'm very happy. I've already used it uh, numerous times, and with this system, you don't need that much power to run it up because the Skyguider Pro has its own uh, separate power source. And the only thing I really need to do is run the ASI Error Plus, which also runs the camera, and that's it. Oh, one thing I can say about this camera lens. Let me go up here about this. I also use 
these step down rings. Now, this camera lens, the native focal, uh, the native F ratio is F2.8. And when you, if you're new to astrophotography, you may not know this, but you don't want to go using a camera lens full open aperture because the stars get kind of wonky. So you want to step it down. I can do the, I can use the internal step down aperture control on the camera, but that makes the st larger stars, it has these horrible diffraction spikes and it doesn't look really good at all. So what you can do instead, you can leave it open at, and just get these step down rings, which were very inexpensive. I think they're 20 bucks. I got a whole set of them. And I now have it, I screw this on and it's close to F4. Actually, it's a F4.1. When I'm at home, I use this little power source, this power box, and plug it in to a, to a normal 120 outlet here in the United States. And this connects right into the Pegasus Pocket Power Box, and that in turn runs everything. When I'm away, I do have a marine battery that I use, but I actually, because this setup, all, it take, all I really have to run is this camera and the ASA Air Plus, I can use this thing and it runs everything. So this is very, very compact, uh, this whole setup. Now I don't know if this thing's gonna, would run the camera all night, I haven't tried that. I just, I, I've only done, you know, like an hour or so and it runs it fine for an hour. And the other thing with this uh, ZWO ASR Plus, which you, we, we, you don't have a computer with that, you just use a tablet or you can even use your cell phone to run it. So as I said, for a compact system, I, I really like this. Well, I'm not quite done yet. I want to show you what, something else I purchased. If you look over in the corner over here, or not in the corner, on the side, I, I, I purchased one of these things for like 40 bucks. It's an Apache 3800 carrying case. And I got it at Harbor Freight. And it's got this pluck foam and I just made a system so I can put my so you can see everything sits in there perfectly nice and protected close it up and I'm ready to go okay now I think I'm done we'll see you in a bit okay folks let's go to my next most recent uh, purchase and this is the exact opposite of the portable wide field scope that I showed you before. This is my Celestron uh, Edge HD 800, so it's an 8 inch, it's a SCT, Schmidt Cassegrain reflector. It's got a mirror in the back, it's got a corrector plate in the front, which is a glass, glass plate, right here. And what happens is the light rays come in, hit the mirror, they get reflected, and they hit the, um, there's a secondary mirror that's attached to the corrector plate, and they get reflected back down to here and they either come out the eyepiece down to uh, this area. And this is where the eyepiece would go, or in this case, my camera. So, what else does this have on it? This is an eight inch ref reflector. Because the light rays get bounced around here, it actually has a focal length of 2,000 millimeters as opposed to the camera lens I just showed you a little while ago, which was 200 millimeters. So this gives a much more magnified view, but it's also a much smaller field of view. Now, I really haven't imaged with full focal length before. That what you would, what you would do for that would be something very, very small, like a planet, something very small and bright, like a planet, or if you wanted to go really deep, deep into the moon, you can, you can. You can get to some of the craters and whatnot on the moon, some things of that night, things of that nature. Or you might want to image a planetary nebula, something else that's really bright but very small. Uh, what I do is I have a focal reducer. Let me see if I can show it to you real closely here. I have a focal reducer uh, attached to it, the Celestron 0.7 focal reducer. Here is the T adapter that connects the GW wool filter drawer. And you just take this, slide this out, and you can screw in your two-inch filter that you want, that you want to use, and slide it back in, and there it's held. And that attaches to my camera, which is the ASI 294MC Pro. Also on this, uh, this 
setup, I have a ZWO EAF, that's an electronic focuser. I've got the Celestron focuser bracket for it. And I've also have, for guiding, I have my Orion short tube 80 millimeter refractor and I have a ZWO 120mm for the auto guiding camera. I really like this as an auto guider because it has a an old type of focuser, the not old type, the rack and pinion focuser, and you can really uh, you can really focus really well on the stars with this method. Now, some people recommend, or a lot of people recommend getting an off-axis guider, and I may or may not do that at some point. But I've been getting really good guiding with this setup. Uh, this the, the reason you would want to one of the reasons you want to use an off-axis guider is this to be lighter. And you should get better guiding because you're using the actual telescope uh, for guiding. But this works uh, really well. It has its pluses as well. And the one thing you got to be careful of if you have a setup like this is you got to make sure your mount can handle it. And this mount can handle it. It's the Atlas Pro, which I'll go into in a second. I also put a, a narrow dovetail on the top of this thing so I can mount stuff up here, like my auto guider. And I've got these ADM adapter holders so you can slide this in on and off real easily and you can use it for for trying to balance your telescope too because if you put this thing way up it'll give it make it more top heavy you put it way back you can make it more bottom heavy so these ADM brackets are great and I have the ADM rings to hold the telescope on for the brains of this operation I have my ASI Air Pro and I purchased this last year. I love it. It's, it does everything. These ASI Air Pros and Pluses are really, really good if you have, especially if you have a portable setup, which this is sort of a portable setup, which I'll go into in a second. Now you may notice my wiring stuff. I've got uh, a lot of this Velcro on here and the Velcro holds a lot of my wires is I sort of wrap them up and put a little velcro on here and then they stick right into the onto the velcro to keep keep the wires so they're not moving. I do have I'll show you the other end of this thing. Oops. Sorry about that folks. You know I have some of this this wrapping around the cords to keep the the cords uh, out of the way so they don't tangle up. And I've never had any problems tangling up on this thing the way I've got it uh, rigged up right now. So that's kind of uh, good. I put a little Velcro strap on here to hold, make sure the power cord uh, holds in onto this ASI Air Pro. I did put another, up here I have another USB port that has four slots and I have that plugged into the ASI Air Pro. This is not a powered USB expansion slot. And they recommend don't getting a power one because it's going to interfere with the actual AS Air Pro. So if you want to more, put more peripherals on here, just get a non-powered one. Okay, so what do I have uh, plugged in here? This cord right here. This is my EQ mod cord. So it actually connects the AS Air Pro to the mount. I have the... The disc, the scan disc, which holds all the stuff from the AS Air Pro. The AS Air Pro, all your pictures can be housed into one of these little USB things that you can take off and put on your computer for processing. I have the EAF plugged into it, and I also have the camera that plugged into this uh, AS Air Pro. And on the other side, you have all the power. Now, what am I using for a mount? why well, I have my Orion Atlas Pro. And it has a slightly more power than the regular Atlas. So this handle is 44 pounds. It's rated slightly more than the regular Atlas. But another good thing about this thing is, it, although it can do azimuth, which I really have never used it for, I've always used it for uh, equatorial configuration. For those not to know, all as is just like a normal tripod or a camera tripod where it, point and shoot. Equatorial mounting, that's where you sort of, you have four axes you got to set, but it tracks the stars really well because it, it takes care of the Earth's rotation. So if you're doing astrophotography, you're going to want it on equatorial mode. All right, this mount comes with some other additions. Uh, it has a better 
altitude adjustment uh, bar for turning and it, it makes it real easy to do the altitude adjustment. And if you want to do the side to side adjustment, you just use these knobs here. They're much easier to use to turn than the regular uh, Atlas mount. And I think that's the same thing with the Skywatcher. The Skywatcher has a uh, Alt As EQ Skywatcher EQ 6R or something like that. And, and, and that's the same thing. This is equivalent to that, to that version. So it has slightly better polar alignment uh, features, if you will. Okay, I'm gonna go down below for a second, but I, you might have known this uh, blue cord that's plugged, also plugged into the ASI Air Pro. Now, let me show you down below what's going on here. I'm gonna lower everybody. Okay, so this cord right here is plugged into this Rockspace Wi-Fi repeater because the ASR Pro it doesn't have a good Wi-Fi range, so they recommend putting a some type of a repeater on here, and this works really well. Even though it's low to the ground, I can get this all through my house and pretty far away, as a matter of fact. So I've 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 got the it really does help. So the ASR Plus has a has its own aerial now, the newer one. But if you're having an older one, you might want to put one of these on here. And this right here, this actually serves uh, my, one of my dew heater, one of my dew heaters. This is my um, AstroZap dew heater controller. So I have one of the dew straps hooked up to the to my guide scope, and the other one I have I, I bought that dew ring for the guide that I also plug into this uh, controller, and that where it seems to work fine. For power, I've got one of these things over here that's a 12 volt power supply that I have plugged into this strap and then this strap just plugs into the my home outlet. Now, if I wanted to go out in the field, I have a battery over there where I would just not use this thing where and I would just take this this power cord that would be plugged into here, I would just take a uh, one of those cigarette lighter adapter batteries and just plug it right into the uh, ASR Pro and then I'd be good to go. If I did that, I would need a separate power supply for, I wouldn't really need any, if I was out in the field, I wouldn't really need the Wi-Fi extender because I'd, I'd be right next to it. So that we, we, we wouldn't need. The only thing, the only extra power I would need would be for the dew straps and I would hook those up to the battery separately, which is what they recommend to do anyhow. And lastly, I, I want to say about this setup, you'll notice it's on this thing, and I've shown other videos of this before. This is my scope buggy, and I wheel this around easily in my yard. I've got a front yard location, which you've seen on some other videos, or I've got it, or I'll take it right outside my driveway, right near my astronomy shed. Okay, so we're at my last setup. This happens to be my oldest setup, but it's the most uh, versatile setup. It's a 115 millimeter refractor telescope, and it means it only has lenses on here. It's got a got a lens that's 115 millimeters up at the top. That's the objective lens, and it just focuses the light down to the bottom here. And this is where you put your eyepiece or your camera and all that stuff. If you're new to astrophotography, I, I highly recommend refractors, a small refractor, even smaller than this one if you're just starting out because they're very durable. You don't have to worry about culmination and all this other stuff. I mean, I can play uh, football with this telescope and then put it back on here and it'll probably be fine to, ready to go. Um, I wouldn't really do that, but you, you, you get the idea. They're very durable, these refractors. You notice I've got a bunch of other gibberish on there. If you're just starting out, I wouldn't, you know, you're probably not going to have all this mumble jumble. But after a while, after you get used to stuff, you might start realizing, hey, I can do this, I can do that, I can do the other thing. What is some of this other stuff? Well, for you'll see this big aluminum plate, and I attach that to the top of the rings, and there are these M6 bolts. That's uh, six millimeter bolts. Uh, that come with the rings for this telescope, this AstroTech telescope. And this is homemade, this uh, this plate. So I lined up everything, I put it on here, and onto this uh, aluminum plate, I've got mounted a ZWO 
guide scope, 16 millimeter guide scope with the ASI 120 millimeter uh, guiding camera. And also attached to this, I don't know if you can see it over here, is a, another Pegasus Pocket Power Box. As I said, I'm, I'm all for Pegasus products. They are a really good company. They make a lot of good stuff, very durable. And they, you, even more importantly, you get help from these guys from Pegasus. If you got a problem with it, uh, they get back to you. A pro I had a problem once a while ago, and they got back to me in an hour. I, I emailed them, and they emailed me back a half hour later, and I was talking with them uh, an hour later. And they, they're, they're from Greece, and I'm here in the United States. So that's, that's the kind of service you get with these guys. So very good company. So I got my Pegasus Pocket Power Box that sort of all, all this stuff goes into that. I've got a powered USB hub where I've got all the peripherals plugged right into this thing and then that's plugged into the uh, power box. And I've got one wire coming off from this power pocket power box, I mean, from the um, USB hub. This goes into the computer. So this, this setup, I don't have the ASIR Pro running everything. I actually have a computer that I run this stuff with because it's in a permanent, it's a permanent setup. It's in my shed here. So I, I just leave a computer uh, sitting over in that corner that runs everything. Okay, what else is on here? You'll notice for focusing, I've got the ZWO AEAF, another one of these for this uh, to do the focusing on this telescope. I've also got a focal reducer on here, the Astrotech 0.8 focal reducer that came with a scope. I've got an ASI 1600 MM Pro, so this is a monochrome camera. And because it's a monochrome camera, you have to have a filter for everything. I have a filter wheel, a ZWO filter wheel, an eight position automatic filter wheel, which holds one and a quarter inch filters. So I have luminosity, red, green, blue, and I also have HA, hydrogen alpha, I have oxygen, and I've also got the sulfur uh, filter uh, for this thing. And I've got a, a blank space for another filter where I just leave it uh, no filter. What is this sitting on? I replaced the original saddle that came with the mount. The mount is an Orion Cirrus mount, and this holds... 30 pounds. It's rated for 30 pounds. This, this I've had for a long time. I've had this, geez, eight years now. I've got it powered with, again, one of those, can you see that there? Oh yeah, good. So I've got another one of these power strap things, these 12 volt power supplies that just plug right into your outlet. I've got all the Velcro holding all the wires together so nothing really gets caught or anything. And I do have the dew straps, and I've got uh, the dew straps, in this case, are connected right into the Pegasus Pocket Power Box. So this power box controls all the dew heaters, so I don't need that separate dew heater supply. So it's done all on the computer. And all of my mounts and stuff are interchangeable. That means I can take this scope off and I can put the, the 200 millimeter lens on here, which and I've done it before. And I can put, take this thing off and I can put this one on the Atlas Pro outside. So by making these dedicated setups, it makes things real easy to interchange them. So that's, a, that's, that's why I wanted to show you this video. It's something you can think about. Now, I don't know if you were a beginner, you would end up doing stuff like that. But maybe after a while, you can make one good dedicated setup if you're a beginner. And then you want another setup. Well, try to think of a way you can make it another dedicated setup because it makes things uh, a lot easier to interchange. Okay, I hope you enjoyed all this, and hopefully I wasn't tongue-twisting too much. I'm trying to do all this stuff in one or two takes and not a whole bunch of takes. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you later.